Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Nomadic Timbo and today I'm going to talk to you about what it's like to travel as an ambivert. Now, obviously you're all familiar with extrovert and introvert, but I know that there's a lot of you that don't know too much about what an ambivert is. So let me explain briefly. What it is, is that it's basically a personality that has character traits from both an in introvert and an extrovert. So it's kind of like a balance between the two, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. So what I will say is that, you know, if you are, I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of people who can really relate to this video because I think pretty much the vast majority of us are ambiverts in some kind of way because, you know, we all have characteristics that are more extrovert or more introvert, even though like we tend to drift towards one more than the other rather than being split down the middle but i think what's important is to explain uh what it's like to travel as an ambivert because i think um whether whether you start off as like an extrovert or an introvert i think you do slowly develop like ambivert character traits as time goes on particularly if you start off as an introvert so let me tell you that when i first started traveling i was yeah there was no question about it. I was definitely an introvert. and uh, but, uh, but then as time went on, the more that I was traveling and the more uh, I was meeting people from around the world, the more I was starting to become a little bit more kind of outgoing. Um, and as a result, I, they were like, there was slowly but surely some more extrovert kind of traits coming into my personality. And then that kind of brought me closer to being an ambivert, so to speak. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really interesting journey because like, I mean, if you do start off as an introvert, for example, then the people who you meet when you travel, I mean, they don't know anything about you. So you're going in very fresh. And then I think you feel permission then to maybe just try out new things with your personality, uh, which you weren't really doing back home because you kind of got into like a certain habit uh, regarding you know, interacting with your friends and your family, because that's who, that's how they knew you from the beginning. <clears throat> I mean, you can still evolve, definitely, you can still change, but I think if you go out of your comfort zone, then the more likely it is that you are going to change kind of quickly, I would say. So let me start off by saying what it's like being a solo traveler uh, as, an in, uh, as an ambivert. Like I said, I started off as an introvert, but then there was a bit more of a balance between being like an introvert and an extrovert. So it actually brought the two together a little bit. And actually, it was a really good feeling. It was a really good feeling that, uh, you know, I felt like there was a good balance developing between being happy to socialize with people, but also being more than comfortable with my own, you know, having my own quiet times. Um, not that there's anything wrong with being an introvert. In fact, if actually solo traveling is perfect for an introvert because, you know, uh, you start off by going by yourself, so you're completely in control of what you're doing, and you know you are. You, I mean, you you are your own master anyway. But <clears throat> excuse me, I think that that kind of lifestyle is very very good for, particularly like an introvert, for example, because it's so easy to get your own space when required, and I think that kind of eases you into maybe adapting new personalities to your character. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting that way. I mean, uh, like for, for the funny thing is, is that because I love movies, for example, um, I, I felt that it was kind of cool traveling as an introvert in the beginning, or even now at times, I have to say, because I've always been a big fan of the Clint Eastwood Western movies. And if you notice that he, no matter what movie or Western movie Clint Eastwood is in, he tends to be this very, very silent and quiet kind of guy who just goes about his business, but is also very assertive and uh, very direct, knows what he wants, and just goes about it, goes about his business the way that he wants to do it and follows his own path. And that's kind of how I see it a little bit. I mean, obviously, you don't get into gunfights with that. Well, hopefully, you won't get into gunfights with anybody anyway. So, um, but uh, yeah, I think, um, I think using that as kind of like a reference is a good way to remind yourself that what you're doing is yeah kind of cool in some ways I would say um but yeah no basically the point that I'm trying to get across though is that like because you're meeting people for the first time from different parts of the world 
I think naturally you tend to be, well, I mean, I hate to use the word forced, but you kind of need to meet people. Um, but you, I think as time progresses, you're kind of open-minded to it, and then it just becomes natural as a result. And at the end of the day, I mean, since I've been doing this for more than a decade, it's just second nature now to meet people, and I actually, I absolutely love it. I mean, um, a lot of times I just can't get enough of it, you know, even though there are times when I do like to have my own space for a large percentage of the time. But uh, I think what I'm trying to say is, is that it's kind of cool where, you know, because you're going out of your comfort zone a little bit, but while at the same time you're sticking to your introverted kind of ways, uh, it's nice that you actually develop um, a little bit more outgoing kind of characteristics to yourself, because I think that does you a lot of good, because at the end of the day, humans are social animals, as we need to remind ourselves a lot of times, particularly when we're into having our own space. So yeah, that's a, that's a good, uh, yeah, that's a definitely a good benefit to traveling as an ambivert for sure. Um, so the next point I want to make is traveling as an ambivert when it comes to group travel. Now, um, being an introvert, um, that can be like hit or miss, to be honest. And it's kind of the same thing with an ambivert, because even though I mentioned the benefits of having uh, character traits from both an extrovert and an introvert, sometimes it can make things a little bit tricky because it can confuse you in your head because... You know, sometimes you're happy to socialize and sometimes you get your energy by, you know, just going into a quiet place by yourself for a few hours. And sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to know, uh, you know, where you want to get your energy from, whether it's by hanging around with a group or whether it's being by yourself. And sometimes uh, if you're in a group, but you really do need to do your quiet times, then it can be a little bit tricky sometimes. And then... And I think this is where like introverts and ambiverts can be a little bit misunderstood sometimes because I think we sometimes give off the wrong impression that, you know, we do, we like to be antisocial and that's not exactly true. It's just that <laughs> some people need their quiet times more than others and, um, and there's nothing wrong with that either. And there's nothing wrong with certainly being more extrovert where you get the energy by socializing as much as you can. I mean... Whatever suits your needs is definitely the best. But uh, just, I think probably the advice I would give um, if you're an ambivert and you're traveling as a group is just, it's, it's all about finding the balance between being open-minded to what the group wants to do, but at the same time, don't compromise yourself too much because at the end of the day, it is your trip. So make sure that you do what it is, what it is that you want to do and stuff and try to have a good balance between... Um, like meeting each other's needs i guess and don't feel good and you know even though it's good to give time to your friends who you even met in the group at the same time don't feel guilty if you do need to have your own space and like i said to people who are more extroverted you know if we do need our own space it certainly it certainly doesn't mean being disrespectful to you or anything like that it's just that uh, we need a little bit more time to recharge our batteries or we need to recharge our batteries in a slightly different way so um but no to be honest though it's uh, it's kind of, it's really great when you do a group travel particularly if they're people that you met on the trip because um as much great as it is to experience cool things by yourself i mean when you're able to share it with people or with a romantic partner even as well as like a group of people then yeah it just kind of adds a little bit of extra to to that particular experience and then um yeah it's just it's uh, maybe sometimes it might even be that much more memorable as a result because of course you get to share the enthusiasm with people and Again, that again highlights our social nature as beings. So, um, so yeah, so just be, just keep an open mind regarding that. And then the last one I will mention, and this is relevant to me as of late too, because of my experience in Sri Lanka over the last year and a half during this pandemic, is that, um, you know, being an ambivert in an international community where you where you meet in a lot of people who. I've ended up living in like a certain part of the world where there's like an expat community. Then, yeah, this is this is where it can be like a little bit more challenging compared to group travel, I would say, in a strange way because 
like you're more likely to see the same faces on pretty much on a daily basis or at least like every couple of days or maybe like you'd see them two or three times a week or something like that for me that was a little bit um that took a little bit of adjusting because i'm used to seeing people for like well i'm used to meeting people and then interacting with them for say i don't know three or four days or maybe a week or something like that and then we all have to move on which is one of the downsides about traveling because you do you do make good friends and the next thing you know it you have to go or they have to go so that can be a bit of a disadvantage it's great being in an international community because it means that you can really really build proper relationships i think um but at the same time too what can be difficult is that when you have like even though you are an ambivert because you have like uh, in introverted character traits it can make it difficult to to know when you feel like going out or where you feel like having your alone time and i think in my experience um a lot of people are quite happy to go out frequently or maybe even every evening so to speak which is fine i mean that's great in fact actually <laughs> I, I have a lot of um, admiration for people like that, where they can get the energy from to do that. I mean, it's certainly, I, I certainly find it amazing. But for me, um, I just need a little bit more time to, to chill and to recharge my batteries compared to maybe like the majority of people, at least in my previous experience uh, in Sri Lanka. So it can be a little bit difficult in that way. And it can, and if you are, needing a little bit more quiet time compared to the rest it can make you feel like the odd one out even though you shouldn't really feel that way but it can make you feel that way but then to be honest though what's really cool is that it doesn't take too long for the community to really and not with um, this is without them even saying anything but you get reminded that you know everybody's cool man everybody's cool and people have different ways and going about their business uh, whatever environment it is that they're in uh, whether it's solo traveling group traveling or being in a community so yeah those are the points that i wanted to get across because like there's a lot of videos about traveling as an in, as an introvert but there's not too many about traveling as an ambivert so i thought because a lot of people more people can relate to this than they actually believe i thought that it was a good um, it was a good topic to pick because as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people have like uh, introverted aspects of their of their personality and extroverted aspects as well. So what I wanted to to say was is that you know whichever form of traveling it is that you do in, I think you know as long as you pretty much have a good idea on what you know your needs are and stuff like that, then yeah, I think you can adapt to any environment. But the fact of the matter is, guys, is that make sure you do what is best for you, because at the end of the day, that it's more likely you'll be the best version of yourself. And that's exactly what you want, because you don't want to compromise yourself or anything like that, because at the end of the day, that can make you feel a little bit difficult inside. And we don't want that. So, yeah, just keep an open mind and be yourself and just embrace just embrace the environment that you're in and embrace uh, having um like a quiet or an outgoing personality at the same time all right so i'll wrap it up there guys once again thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again soon ciao